The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory and all the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left and then the king will say to those at his right hand come you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then the king will say to those in his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and all of his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. I was naked and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. And they answered, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry? or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and we did not take care of you. Then he answered them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do to the least of these, you did not do to me. And those will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I saw the sign in March of 1988. I was in Peter Maritzburg, South Africa, because during that semester at seminary, I had been an occasional student at the University of Zimbabwe in Harare, and I took the word occasional literally and only occasionally went to school. And so instead, I spent most of my time traveling around South Africa and learning about the situation that was unfolding there in the late 80s at the height of apartheid. And during my time, I went down during one of the breaks from school, I extended it a little bit, and I went down and spent several weeks in South Africa. And one of the first places I visited was Peter Meritzburg. I had made friends with a man named Gert Lottmann when he had spent time at the Lutheran School of Theology where I was a student the previous year. And Gert was a pastor and worked at a seminary in Peter Maritzburg. And he was also responsible for a community that lived together. People of different colors and races joined together under one house, which was illegal at that time because of apartheid. And while visiting Garrett and staying with these students, we went and we visited the Peter Maritzburg Action for, uh, Agency for Christian Social Action. It was a community organization that was committed and dedicated to ending the horrors of apartheid. I went in and I met the woman who ran it, Monica Wittenberg, a small and powerful woman. And I saw the sign on her wall. And it seared into my brain. It was a reworking of the text I just read. But instead of what we are used to saying, it said, I was hungry, and you went on a diet. I was thirsty, and you watered the lawn. I was a stranger, and you called the police. 
I was naked. And you bought the latest fashion. I was sick. And you asked, is it contagious? And I was in prison. And you said, that's where people like you belong. It seared into my soul. Because it was talking about this text in practical terms. In the ability to see Christ in our neighbor, but also to be able to reflect on how we are living that out in our own lives and with our own values. It was about the willingness to move beyond just the words into a very real understanding of what it means to live this out. And over the next couple of years, it became even more powerful because my friends that I made and I met that day were people who literally lived that out in their own lives. Just a few months after my visit, Monica was run over by a panzer by the South African army in an attempt to quiet her. It did not kill her, but it radically infected her body and her ability to be able to respond in life because so many of her bones had been crushed. Her son was arrested and tortured because of his commitment to being a voice for the powerless, a young pastor who made that commit commitment. My friend Gert Lottmann, he was shot and killed because of his willingness to stand up for what he believed in. A belief that all are children of God and that when we see them and when we engage with people of all races of all nations, we see the image of God. This text for today reminds us where our loyalties lie and how we are called to live our lives in faith. This day that we celebrate, Christ the King Sunday, it is actually the most recent addition to the liturgical calendar. It is less than 100 years old. It began with Pope Pius XI in 1925. He was in Rome, and he was looking around in Europe, and he was aware of what was transpiring with the rise of fascism. It was a while before Hitler and Mussolini would come to their full power, but he saw the writing on the walls. He saw that people were placing a sense of nationalism and an allegiance to one leader above their basic values. That they were willing to compromise what they said that they believed because of fealty to a powerful force that took them away from their core values. And so, he said, we need to remember the one to whom we are loyalty, the one to whom we are subjects. And it is not a human leader. It is not a single nation. It is our Lord who is Lord of all the nations. And this text was picked as one of the texts to focus on Christ the King Sunday because it reminds us of the Lord who is the Lord of all nations and who defines us not by how we respond to a king, but how we respond to each other. How we treat and how we see one another. How we love and care for Christ who is our neighbor, especially the last, the lost, and the least. Those who are powerless. Our God who is Christ the King shows the most power not by holding on to that power, but by yielding it and becoming the most vulnerable. And we, we remember the one to whom our loyalty and allegiance belongs. So as the rise of fascism occurred in Central and Europe during the years that followed, each year the church was to be reminded that Christ is king. And Christ is a king 
who cares not about his own needs, but about the other, about the stranger, about the sick, about the hungry, about the naked. We have a God who calls us to love and to care and defines our faith not by our loyalty to a nation, but by our loyalty to a Lord who calls us to serve. And as that sign reminded me, that service is manifested, not just in lip service, but in life service. And that life service is, I believe, the call of Christ the King Sunday. This is a problematic text in many ways because you read it and you think, okay, well, how do you divide the sheep and the goats? And, 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 and what happens if I, if I don't always do everything perfectly? Because I don't know about you, but I know that I've asked if it's contagious. <laughs> Especially now when I think that's an okay thing to do. But how do you respond to it? There have been times when I've spent money on myself when I know I could have given it to the other. I could just as easily be a goat as a sheep if it's based on even a single action. Or what about the person who has lived their whole life as a goat and just one time does a sheep-like thing and cares? How is this all weighed out? Well, here's the deal. I don't think that this is about what happens when we die. I think this is a text about how we live and about the grace and the experience of God, because we understand as Lutheran Christians that we do not get into heaven based on having a checklist of saying, okay, you know, the only way you get into heaven is to have a poor person give you a character reference. But we're called to live our lives that way. And when we live our lives that way, we actually experience the grace of God before we get to heaven because we know that the world is so much more than just what we have or don't have, but about how we live. And the best way for me to, understand, to, to help explain this is a, is a quote from one of my favorite literary characters of all time. One of my favorite books is The Brothers Karamazov by Fedor Dostoevsky. And Fedor Dostoevsky created one of the most amazing characters, Father Zosima. And Father Zosima is this godly, faithful man. And Father Zosima, I want to make sure I get it exactly right, Father Zosima says that hell is the suffering of being unable to love. Hell is the suffering of being unable to love. And that is what I think this text is ultimately about. It's about our ability to love and see beyond ourselves, our needs, and what's in it for me. Because we find grace and we find joy when we respond and see in all of the people of God, when we see in the least of these the presence of Christ, we experience Christ around us at all times and in all places, and we are able to experience the joy and the power of Christ among us. But when we are unable to love, when we only see what's in front of us, what's in it for me, what I can get, what I can hold on to, how I can benefit, then we are experiencing hell because our inability to love keeps us from being loved in the way God intended us to do. When our worldview allows us to see Christ around us rather than enemies who are taking or strangers to be afraid of or those from whom we need to be filled with fear. We live lives of fear. And when we live lives of fear, we do not experience love because perfect love casts out all fear. And that, that is what we are called to do. 
And that is how we acknowledge that Christ is King. That Christ is Lord and Savior of our lives. Our lives are enriched by relationships with others and impoverished when we fail to love. This doesn't change what happens when we die, but it radically transforms how we live. And we are called to live as people of love. We are called to walk in the light of Christ. We are called to see Christ around us. And that is the beginning of the glimpse of heaven when Christ truly surrounds us and gives us the fullness of light in a darkened world. So today, remember the one to whom you owe loyalty and see Christ around you. And when you know that, you know the beginning of the fullness of grace that is realized. When Christ as King comes and claims us all as his own. Amen.